Hello and welcome. My name is Sanjay Soni. Here's G with an insight into conflict resolution with Azure Cosmos DB Multimaster. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Now, let's get started. Hi, G. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you? Good. Awesome. So what do you do at Microsoft? Yeah, so I'm a developer with Azure Cosmos DB on the dis distributed runtime team, and uh, I'm one of the engineers that built Multimaster, which just got released a couple of months ago. All right, let's get started with our first question. So what does a conflict mean in a multi-master scenario, and how can conflicts happen? Right, so in a multi-master scenario, you can write to multiple regions at the same time. With that, with Cosmos DB, you get single-digit millisecond latencies for writes and reads, as well as increased availability, five nines availability for writes and reads. Yeah. But what that also means is you can write the same item at the same time in multiple different regions. I see. So officially, a conflict occur when multiple writers concurrently write the same item from several different regions before any write to any region has been propagated to the other region. I see. So just to understand that a little more, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, let's take the sequential write example first. Picture this. You have an, an employee entering data about polar bears in their jobs. OK. So That sounds like fun. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love polar bears. In 2017, a polar bear named Eyes has his job as a chef in West US. Mm -hmm. And the employee enters it into the database, and this gets replicated to North Europe. Yes. Now, in 2018, if you try to enter the same ID again, Eyes, but he got a new job as an engineer, you can't do an insert anymore. Because when you try to do an insert, the, the entity already exists. Already exists. And you get a giant red flag saying, hey, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. Now, in a conflicting scenario, if you do inserts from two places at the same time. Let's say the West US employee was lazy and forgot to enter it for an entire year. In 2018, the eyes got a new job as, as an engineer. And they both get ins inserted into their respective databases from different regions, West US and North Europe. But then when they replicate to each other, there's a giant question mark with regards to how we can handle two of the same documents with different data. I see. So now that we know what a conflict is, what kind of options does Cosmos DB offer for resolving these conflicts? Right, so Cosmos DB offers several conflict resolution policies um, just to provide more flexibility to, to customers. And the two that we offer is last write wins, where the last writer wins. Last writer wins. Yes, okay. so it's a numerical comparison of a property to resolve the conflicts. So the default uses the timestamp, so whichever was written last wins. And you can also override it to a user-defined property specified at the container creation time. So for example, in our previous example, we can use the uh, property year to decide which one is newer and, and which one to keep. And th this uh, policy is available for all APIs and all SDKs. I'll just show a little snippet of how to create the collection in, in .NET code for SQL API. So let's take a look at the previous example. Um, remember that red question mark last time we had? In this case, we have a conflict resolver that looks, looks at the year property, 2018 yeah. versus 2017. And it does a calculation, hey, 2018 is a higher number than 2017. So then it picks the 2018 entry and keeps it. I and see. now your, your entire database across the world is now in a consistent state. Is it more recent data, or is it because it knows, like, understands 2018? So you? if you do more, the default is the timestamp property. With timestamp, you get the most recent. But of if course. the user, to get full flexibility, if the user prefers to have their own property, for example, an epoch, or the year, or uh, you leveled up in, yes. in a game, then you would pick the higher level always. All right, gee, that sounds very interesting. Can you please show us a live demo? Oh, absolutely. So here I have a little program with the West US client and the North, North Europe client. So all we're trying to do is to insert two of the same documents into different regions at the same time. When both succeed, you know that you've generated a conflicting scenario. Okay. So we're running against the last right wins collection, which is the, the resolution policy that we just talked about. All right, as you saw, well, the first insert failed because uh, we had one success and one failure with uh, conflict as the sequential write, um, just to show how fast, or this actually demonstrates how fast the replication is for, for Cosmos DB. And the second thing, the ICE one went into both West US and North Europe, which means there's a conflicting scenario and only one should have won. What we expect here is the 2018 to win, mm -hmm. right? So we go into Data Explorer, we'll pick the last writer wins document, and you see the two documents there. Uh, when we look at ICE one which is the one where both went in, we see that the year is 2018 and, and the last writer wins one. Mm -hmm. I see. 
So Cosmos DB also offers this custom uh, conflict resolution policy, mm -hmm. which uh, you can register a stored procedure and do any, any sorts of CRUD operations on any document within the same partition key. So this is, offers uh, extreme versatility and it gives you just the same features as what you would have in a regular stored procedure, except this is during the conflict resolution. We offer exactly once guarantee, which means the conflict will only be resolved once. So if you say you, you want to say create a new document when you encounter a conflict, that document will only ever be created once. Uh, unfortunately, this is currently only available for the SQL API, but it will eventually come to other APIs as well. Awesome. Um, just to give a quick demo of the same behavior, we have implemented a uh, store procedure that also achieves the loss rate of wins semantics. It's a much stronger store uh, policy, and it's recommended for advanced users. So in this case, let's go back to the UDP user-defined procedure, and let's take a look at ICE 1 again, and you see 2018-1 again. And just to give a quick uh, sneak into what the procedure looks like, this procedure implements last writer wins. It's the exact same semantics. I see. If your uh, store procedure throws an exception, or if you do not register a store procedure, we register all the conflicts in what's called the conflicts feed. This is especially useful when you need to asynchronously query and resolve those conflicts. So for example, if you need to consult an external entity outside your database, yes. then you have to resolve this conflict externally. So that's one option. You can query the conflicts feed and resolve these conflicts uh, yourself. Just as, as an example with the same example, uh, if you run against this, you go back to the portal and you look at the document. In this case, mm -hmm. 2017 got inserted first. So the 2018 engineer got registered under the conflicts feed. I see. So in this case, you can see that the engineer got registered under this conflicts feed and you can do whatever you need with it. You can choose to let this win. You can consult an external entity to figure out what the job for this polar bit actually is. Thanks for this demo. Now, do you have any other examples of how powerful these custom resolution procedures actually are? Oh, absolutely. So uh, a lot of people have been asking what's called the CRDTs, or conflict-free replicated data types. Actually, CRDTs can be achieved via our custom store procedure. All updates just go through this patch sprock of, you know, read the delta, mm -hmm. update the document, and update the, that's it. And for your merge procedure, which is the conflict resolution procedure, all you have to do is to take the delta, update your document, and, and update it. So at the end of the day, every region uh, converges into a single version of the document, and you can achieve any of the known CRDTs at the moment. So what we have here is, is a map of the world, and we have set up our Cosmos DB in three regions, right? Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is to count the number of likes, like a, like a you know, social media app, right? So different regions will count their, uh, increment their likes independently, and eventually you should converge. Okay. And so we just start the likes. You see that the, the number in, the, in black is the number of cur the current value of the uh, counter, and the number in blue on, under each region is the number of likes from that region itself. Okay. So at some point, we can just stop the... Uh, uh -huh. And eventually, all three regions converge to 260. Uh, the United States region actually got 75 likes, the uh, Europe got 107, and the India region got 78 likes. But eventually, all three actually got to the same value in terms of a counter. And this is all achieved through a single uh, store procedure for the conflict resolution. Wow, that was a fantastic demo. Thank you so much for all this great information you shared with us. Thank you. Thank you for watching this microlearning readiness video about Azure Cosmos DB. To learn more about this and other topics, please go to azure.com forward slash Cosmos DB. Please stay tuned for more videos.